Hello and welcome to the fourth and final webinar in a four part series based on finishing insights and implications from both the under 21 and senior European Championships from 2020. This webinar will explore open play goals only with a specific view on crossing throughout the tournaments. My name is Simon Houston and I am joined by Mark Neville. Okay, so the outcomes of this webinar, just like the other three before this in the series, we'll be looking to observe some data we've collected on how the open play goals were scored. Then relating this data at the top level of the game to implications it may have on coaches working with younger players and at grassroots level. And finally, Mark's kindly interpreted the data for us and used it to create a practice example. So some of the headlines to come out of crossing then and the, the assists from crosses for goals within both tournaments. Uh, as we can see on this slide, we've defined a cross and it's not traditionally uh, what we what we always might have thought as, as an aerial cross. We've included a few more types of cross within that definition too. So have a read through. And we can just see there how commonly goals were assisted by these types of crosses. So 33% in the senior Euros represents one in three goals from open play were directly assisted by a cross. Okay, so on this slide, we can observe the types of crosses that assisted open play goals from the tournament. Just pause and digest this at your own pace uh, and unpack the data. Our aim is not to just compare and contrast these two graphs. Um, we want to pose a question back to the audience. How might this graph look with the teams and players that, that you coach and work with and why? So, for example, there we can see in the under-21s championship, fast across crosses uh, where there's definite outcome to pick out a teammate with a lateral ball across the floor, a pass, if you like. That, you know, half of the, half of the, the goals that were assisted by crosses were from that passed across type of cross. And cutbacks as well were the second most common within the under 21s. Whereas if we look at the seniors, whipped crosses were very dominant, 43%. And the pass the cross were the second most common, but less so than the under 21 championship. In terms of the locations for the uh, crosses that assisted goals, we can see that there is a nice spread just from the senior the tournament, senior tournament. Um, within the final third, think about a typical crossing session now that you, you may put on a crossing and finishing drill that you may have seen or coached. Does this reflect the modern game at the top level? Because this picture shows the spread. And then if we look at that data and group it into three zones, wide crosses, box crosses in the blue from inside the box, and that red area we've categorized as deep crosses, we can see that most of the assists from crosses by our definition came from inside the box. So Nev, you've seen that data a few times. Um, you've, you've looked through it and you've digested it and now you've come up with some implications it may have on you as a coach. Great data, isn't it? It does, it does potentially dispel some myths that we cross it from a, a, a driven ball or a whip ball from a wide area. So I wonder how often uh, crossing or our uh, finishing and crossing games or practices look like that. So if we're talking about 33% of out of open play goals being scored from a cross, to what extent do we give the players a chance to have a go at this? And let's be honest, crossing's fun, isn't it? So ball striking. So let's practice the variety of ball striking that we've seen there. Um, I guess one of the things to look at, which doesn't come up in the data, would be where, when do we cross, why do we cross, what does a game give us and what does a defensive line do in? What's the momentum? If they're sat in and they're facing away from goal, are we going to cross? Are we going to try a different type of pass or ball or, or ball into the box? Um, which leads us nicely into uh, varieties of crossing. So it, one of the things in the data that was really, really apparent was the variety that we had across both tournaments, like senior and youth. So we've got cutbacks, whipped, passed across, stood up, all, I would imagine, a response to tactics and strategies that have been deployed and the affordances of what space is in front of the players as, they, as they're there to hit the ball. So to what extent do our practices really promote that variety of ball striking whether we're whipping it whether we're driving it whether we're feeling it into an area we're crossing from deep but we're having a like that kevin de bruyne that 10 cross we're trying to find the space off shoulders 
but from a deeper, not a wider area. So how do we how do we design practices that feed and give the kids as much experience to experience these um, variety of crossing opportunities as possible to to strengthen and broaden their arsenal and their armory of passes and, and distribution into the box. Some great stats in there. So looking forward into into practice design. If we can, there we go. This is just again. If if if, you, if any of you know me from from my previous role, I love a game. So this for me would be a game that I would um, frequently play with the kids and to give them exactly what we just talked about, a variety of experiences of crossing and a variety of experiences of how you might finish, how you might run off shoulders or run in front or respond to what the game gives you. So the game's called Dominator. It's a simple winner stays on type game. We have 4v4 plus four on the outside and obviously a two keeper. So it's a 5v5 with a rotation ability to rotate that the four players on the outside and inside. Now the players on the outside aren't just stood there and bounce players. The players on the on the outside, we can use them to bounce, but primarily they are there to try and provide and look for and assist from a crossing technique. And that can be from deep. So if we look at the yellows attacking into the blues, it could be the three and two. If you look at them, you can see that they're probably providing those deeper Kevin De Bruyne type crosses. Whereas if you look at the 11 and the 7, they're probably looking to try and provide the driven, the whipped or the stood up, depending on what the game gives them. What we've also done with them, we've limited the players on the outside to two touch and two second rule. So we can't really provide them with any pressure other than stand in front. So we've tried to provide pressure with a two touch and a two second rule. If they go beyond either of those, it's a free kick to the team that didn't give them the ball. Nice and simple stuff. So... What we're trying to do by elevating, we're, we're trying to elevate their value in the game. So to get themselves back in to play in the game and to score goals, they need to look for and try and provide an opportunity to score a goal from across. So they're consistently looking for an assist. So as that ball travels to them, I would advocate that if they're looking for that, they'll position themselves in, a, in an appropriate manner so they get the ball at their feet and provide that opportunity to the guy in. Now, if they score, if the team scores from one of their... Um, crossed balls or assisted balls they get the jump in for the team that just conceded so you get this nice rotation it's competitive and everybody wants to be inside but also on the outside your value is you are providing crosses and goal scoring opportunities to which whatever the game gives you it's competitive it's fun and it's problem solving um i guess what I'd, uh, some of the other things i'd like to think about if we go back to some of the data that we've seen previously We've got the opportunity to attack the second six yard box to to make that a, a high value area and to to dial that experience up another aspect i'd like to touch on it isn't crossing but it's the it's how you finish the cross so i've put in here a points tariff i would normally present this to the kids and say okay but what's the easiest way to score well it's this you're going to give that a one someone give me an example of a hard way to score it might be a bicycle and it you're normally is a bicycle kick by the way or well, let's make that five and get them to fill out the tariff and own the tariff so they get a chance to go at a different technique so i've ticked off bicycle kick i'm going to do a volley now or i've ticked off volley i'm going to go for a, for a half volley or i've ticked off header i'm going to go and do so you've got that as well we can we can expand their finishing experiences in relation to the balls that are coming in and being delivered from the from the players on the outside which also gives us a variety of ways to score and run off shoulders or explore space around around players so that's my offer. That's how it looks for my interpretation of data. I guess I'd really like you guys to, to get it. Press pause if you have to, look at the screen, take the session, go and have a go. And you can, I'd really like to see some of your examples of the session. So maybe look at any of our channels, YouTube, uh, FA Education, um, Twitter handle, and maybe show us some examples and or some how you've modified this session. But yeah, go and enjoy yourself. It's a good session. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Thanks, Nefs. Um, as insightful as always, you've, you've used the, the data uh, really well there, not just data from this webinar. You've used data from from the previous three as well and combined that together expertly well. Then you've related it to the what it means for you as a coach. You've digested it before you've started planning the session and then finally taken it into the session design on the grass. So thanks to you and thank you for everyone watching, whether it's just this webinar or you've been through the whole series, we've really enjoyed making it. So we hope, we hope you enjoyed watching it too. Thanks very much.